My name's Anthony Allen, welcome here to my YouTube channel. This is part eight and lesson eight of a 10 part series that I'm running for those that are new to Final Cut Pro 10, AKA FCPX. And lesson eight is coming up right after this introduction. Hi guys, Anthony Allen here and we are in part eight of 10 of this Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In this lesson, we'll be looking at using layers and what layers are within Final Cut Pro 10. Layers can be very useful in terms of adding logos and creating various effects. And especially when using green screen. We're not going to be using green screen here in this video, but there is green screen videos on my channel that shall dramatically help you when you're getting ready to start using green screen from beginner to intermediate level. And of course you can become a pro with much practice. So let's get started using layers. So when you layer up a sound or a audio and visual, you will have to drag something within the timeline. If you don't know how to do this, of course, I have made lessons on this and this is contained within this playlist and this 10 part series. So I advise you to go back and watch previous lessons so you can get those tips that will help you within Final Cut Pro 10. Now you can see an angel version of myself and a dark angel version of myself that I've created. Both of these have a transparent background. You can see this, as I've mentioned, I changed the background of my player to the bitmap instead of a black background. So I can see when there's nothing within the background of an image. If I were to drag the angel version of myself into the timeline, as this is an image and it's static, the length did not matter. But if I was to drag this on top of this video image, all images are on the top half of the timeline. And I'll teach you that in a second because it will make more sense. And I drop this on top of that video image. You see that it appears on top of the image below. Exactly as it appears in the timeline is how it appears within the preview of the video. And you can see that here. Now the image on top can be edited without affecting the image below. If I select this piece of media, which is the top layer, and then I select transform with the playhead in the right place so I can see what I'm doing. And I select this icon here, which shows me the markers to make the transform. I can use the on-screen controls to change the size. And also to move this around. Just going to undo those actions. Or I can use the inspector and toggle this accordingly. I wanted to show you a static image on top of a moving image for those of you who want to add your logo to your videos. Now one important thing to mention is that our preview window is actually set to fit the size of the entire window. Just thought I'd mention this just in case you're adding your logo to the corner of a screen. What I mean by this is you can't see the edges of the player, meaning you might be missing valid parts of the image. In order to get rid of the browser window, move to the top right hand corner of the screen and click on this icon right here. You can now see more of your video image. Let's see what happens when I make the bottom layer smaller. Remember, I've changed the look of the background of the player so I can see if there's anything within the background instead of it being black when I'm working with a different shade of black. With the clip selected, we're gonna to go up to the transforms. I'm gonna change the size of this image. As you can see, the bitmap is now showing. That means that there is nothing 
within those pixels there. I'm going to undo that action. This is helpful because if you have a slight letterbox, which means if you have black bars on your video image, you will be able to see if those black bars are showing or not, as you can see the entire player window as opposed to part of the player window. Now, in order to move this on screen with transform selected and the on screen control showing, you can simply drag the image to where you want. I wanted to show you this with an image as opposed to a video so that it makes more sense. Now I'm going to delete this. Actually, no, we return it because I want to show you something else before we move on. I'm going to open the browser up again and I'm going to show you that you can actually layer up on top of that layer. There is nothing stopping you. So let's work with three layers now. I'm going to drag the Dark Angel version of myself on top. So it's the top layer of the angel. Now at this point, something interesting happens with these static images. The Dark Angel is covering the face of the angel here. It cannot do it the other way around because this is the top layer. The middle layer, as you will, is the angel. And the main layer is the waterfall. The reason why I mentioned that the main layer is the waterfall is because if you look closely at the timeline, there are two attachments applied, meaning that the main source, the main part of the timeline is what is dominant. If I was to delete the waterfall, both of these images could go along with it because these layers are currently attached to the waterfall. Let me show you. Notice how all layers have been deleted. That is because the two layers were attached to our main source within the timeline. Let's undo the action. Let's say you didn't want it attached to that specific piece of media within the timeline. You can move the media so it's attached to something else. Look closely at these two bars when I extend the duration of this image. In this case, it stayed still. Now I'm going to move the image. And you can see the bar moving and attaching to another main source within the timeline. It is now attached to a different source of media. Even if I extend it further, it is still attached to this source within the timeline. Now if I delete this piece of media, the angel, which is underneath the dark angel, will disappear. That angel has disappeared because it was attached to that media source within the timeline. Notice how the dark angel is still on our preview window. Now let's undo that action. This works the same for moving images, video, and of course, sounds, because you can layer your sounds. Now at this point, I'm gonna show you some sound being layered. Let's look through our sound effects panel. So there are sound effects here. We're gonna search for some birds. We've got a crow, a dove, a duck, a geese, a hummingbird, an owl, a rooster, a seagull, a sparrow. Hmm. Maybe we can look for a cricket. You can sample the sounds by pressing the play button
that's the type of crickets we are looking for. Before I drag it into the timeline, I want to be able to see the lower half below the main source within the timeline. The sound is also attached to a main source within the timeline, which you can see right here. The way we know that the main source in the timeline is these pieces of media here is there is a black bar that shows within the timeline. That black bar is the main media sources within the timeline or the main timeline if you will. Everything is attached to this main timeline or main layer. Let's drag the insect crickets onto where our water dragon. Now using the trim tool, and the decibel is being lowered. You can also apply a transition to your sounds by clicking and holding on these little circles at the end of an audio form. Let's have a look at what this looks like. Brilliant, we have now added a sound layer to our timeline. If you've enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Or if you've learned something, definitely give me a thumbs up. We have more videos coming in this 10 part series. This was part 8, congratulations you've made your way all the way to part 9 which is the next lesson. Stick around because that lesson's coming up and we're going to cover titles within that lesson. Mm -hmm.